Hey, Hayden. We're blaming Moses for this one. What do you have to say for yourself, Moses? I'm sorry. Me too. Anyway, <laughs> um, we're just going to dive in with question six. Well, maybe not. So basically, we're looking at the relationship of when one variable increases or decreases with the other. So go back, have a look at the first example, the intro. But basically, we can see here that if this ladder slides down, right, the length here is going to be increasing at a particular rate, and that's going to be affected by this length here decreasing at a particular rate. So your job is to find a connection between the two variables, and in this case, it would be Pythagoras. Okay, because we're looking at the changing rates over time when we differentiate, that's the, the rate that it changes over time, so we differentiate with respect to t. So you can see there x squared 2x dx by dt, 2y dy by dt, and 0. So questions will give you this, they'll give you this. To find x, you'll get the y value, slap it back in here, etc., etc. Okay, um, so we went through and we did the very first question. Oh, that's Promethean Man. Promethean Man again. Um, so you can have a look. I'll pop these just the solutions up on um, OneNote that you can have a look. But I hope it's pretty self-explanatory. We'll do six together and then hopefully you can go back and have a look at the others and do it the same way, preferably without looking at the answers. Um, but here we go. So you get the connection, you write it down. So in all the previous questions, it's been the volume. So we write the volume formula down, or if it's an area, we write the area formula down. So we've got this formula that was given to us. And then try and find out what information is from the question. So it said the pressure increases at a constant rate of three. So I'm going dp by dt, because that's the rate, is three. If it was decrease, then I would put negative three. All right, find the rate at which the volume is changing. So I want to find dv by dt. I put that as a question mark. And we've got information that the pressure is 50. I just ranted at the class. Um, and by the way, pick this mystery voice, Hayden. Hi. <laughs> a little bit more information. Can you say something, uh, something about the weather today? Um, the weather is pretty good. Yeah, that's enough. You have to pick who that was. All right, so we go along and we differentiate to see what's going on. So P, derivative of P is one, but we've differentiated with respect to time. And then we go to differentiate V, but we stop because what's going on here? It's a function times A function, right? And we just have to check, is the V, yes, the V is changing, so it's not a constant thing. So we times it by V1 to the 1.5 plus then put P times 1.5 V, take away 1, so we've got a half. The derivative of 400 is good old 0. So now we have a look and we go, well, what information is going on here? We have dP by dT. We have the P, which is 50, and I forgot, look at that, I forgot to put my dV by dt when I differentiated. <sighs> so I pop that in, and we have that, and they go back to talking. So what's going on? We do not have our little V which means we have to use this information here to find V. Mm -hmm. Treble, it means triple times three. That must have been a random question for something else. So is there a way that we can find V when P is fifth day? Yes, by what? Doing what? Slap it back into the original, that's right. So we're going to go back up here and we've got 50 times V to the 1.5 equals 400. Oops. Uh, what's that? 80 to the 1.5. Um, how do I get rid of the power of 1.5? Uh, 
you can cube root or you can you can take it to the two over three or the one over so you can cube root 1.5 or you can go that's 80 to the one over three over two which is two over three okay and it's 80 it's eight not 80 they got another serve just then so now you have your v value you have everything that you can sub in and that means you'll be able to find dv by dt all your hard work is done so sub and solve we've got stuff pouring out it's dripping down and you know it's pouring down let's uh ooh, wheat let's go yellow right so it's coming out of the yellow it's coming out of the truck and it makes this little pile and then it keeps growing and keeps growing and it makes this beautiful conical shape okay but i'll redraw that because it does say that the radius is three times woo, that of the height so it's like a spread out not that it matters if you didn't draw it you don't have to draw it to scale anyway wheat runs from a hole in a silo at a constant rate and forms a conical heap whose base radius is treble the height so base radius is treble the height so would you agree that the radius is going to be three times the height after one minute the height of the heap is 20 centimeters so Find the rate at which the height is rising at this instant. So we want dH by dt when t equals 1. All right. So volume of a cone, what's our formula? You know it's right next to you, right? Don't we? I think we do. And Will has just been a gem over there. I was actually going, going to go, so don't write this down, Hayden. I was going to go one third pi r squared times height. And then this is just, see, I overthink things. So the radius would be 3 h squared times height. And we get one third times pi. I don't know why I'm saying this when we're not going to do this now, but I just want to appreciate Will's manoeuvre. Okay, so we differentiate. The problem is that what is dv by dt? Because we don't have it anywhere when we differentiate, right? Um, we'll be able to have dh. dh by dt is what we're going to find. How would I get all the other stuff? I'd sap, slap my values in. But similar to what we're about to do with Will, is I would have worked out what my volume was when t is 1. Right? So... Um, after one second, the height was 20. That would make the radius 60, which means I could find out what my volume was at that time because I'd have my radius, I'd have my height. But you're going, well, that's your volume. How does that give you dv by dt? Will, well, how would that give me dv by dt? <laughs> it's the same thing you're using. Uh, having a bit of stage fright with it. Because originally the volume was zero. So after one minute, if the volume was whatever, 60 pi or what have you, that was my dv by dt. Will has simplified it down to even better, which I absolutely love. And he's gone, well, why don't we just use this and differentiate and go dr by dt equals 3 dh by dt. We're all with us. We want to find that one, but we do not have dr by dt. Now, he's gone and done the same thing. After one minute, or well, here we go, after one minute, what is your radius? If the height is 20, the radius would have to be 60. Therefore, dr by dt must be 60. And that worked, Will? Or did you use 20? I seriously love that. That came crashing down then because we were using dr by dt was 20, but it's not because the height's 20, 
the radius has now become 60. We oui, we. Oui. So out of all of that, yeah, bad luck. No, you can't do that. You actually have to go. You have to find the radius because that's how they're they're linked. You have to because you have to find out the way, the fact that they're linked with the volume, correct? But that made me that made me think, Will. I love that though. Well done. So you're still going to have to come out here and go. Well, let's just simplify this. This is volume. What's nine times a third? Three. Yeah, it's one of those days. Pi h cubed okay so we get dv will you don't know how disappointed I, I really thought that was no i was with you 100 percent. me too so again we're going with out of all of this we want to find dh by dt that's the thing we want correct do we have h? Yep, that was the h equals 20 because it was at that instant. This was the one that was concerning us. But as we said, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put it back into volume is one third pi times, what was that? Well, I could have simplified that back to a third, uh, three. So three pi h cubed to say 3 times pi times 20 cubed and we get v but dv by dt hang on dv by dt is going to be your v amount because the volume started at zero and then it became whatever this is going to be what is that that's going to be disgusting eight threes 24 24 something thousand Oh, is it 1,000? Poi. So that is dV by dt. Oh, pig's bottom. Now, I was hoping to actually get the next question done. So you can go ahead and sub. I'll pop that on one note to save it for you. Um, I wanted to go ahead and get the next one done now. Let's not worry about the jet plane. And the 9, I wanted to do 10 because it's similar triangles, which I think we might have forgotten over the years. So maybe we'll do 10 Friday morning. Can I ask you to very carefully read the example? Did we name him? Oh, no, we named the woman. Oh. <laughs> so Travis, Travis over here. Trevor. Trevor is making a very valid point. When we do questions like this, this will take me 30 seconds, kids. When we do questions like this and we're finding out the 20 or the values, we use our angle as degrees. But when we differentiate, right, d theta by dt, we've got to go, it's in radians. So I want you to really, this just is, just make sure, just have a look. I can do that long, I've just run out of time now. But can I ask you to read this? and see if you can give 11, 12, and 13 a go. They're pretty much linked, okay? Yeah, we'll do 10 on Friday. Don't worry about eight and nine. See how far you can get.